Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing another movie review in the month of October since it's Halloween month. And this time, it's not a horror-related movie. It's not a horror comedy, but it's simply a lighter-than-the-feather fantasy comedy that came out on September 19, 2008. I'm talking about the comedy Ghost Town with British comedian Ricky Gervais in his feature film debut in America after his supporting roles in Night at the Museum movies not to mention he was in the TV series The Office yeah, the BBC original that would soon become NBC's long-running popular remake with Steve Carell yeah <laughs> Uh, this time he plays a cranky antisocial dentist in Manhattan, New York, where all of a sudden he begins to see dead people. And not just actual dead people, the ones that truly annoys him, including uh, Greg Kinnear as the recently deceased husband of Widower, played by Tele Leone, which eventually she lives uh, just next door or around all the other rooms uh, at his apartment yeah and now this is not a paid request or anything like that and I usually don't do any requests that much on my channel I, mean, I, don't, I probably get paid anyway but yeah, because I know half of my friends uh, that I subscribe to have been doing all these pay requests on Patreon and all that stuff. But um, this is going to be a request to my best friend, who I haven't seen her in a very long time. But I have been receiving um, all these cards, holiday cards and all, uh, every year. And, and sometimes, you know, we, I do send her some gifts, and I also, and sometimes she sends me some gifts. Yeah, it's Mia. Yeah, Mia Montaigne. Yeah, the, the daughter of actor Joe Montaigne. Yeah. And, I, and boy, I really do miss Mia. And I'm glad she mentioned this because... I had this the whole time, and I had to look for it straight out of my closet. Uh, yeah, because I bought this at Goodwill a long time ago. And because I remember watching this movie uh, a long time ago, like, I think back in 2008 and 9. And I remember how hilarious it was, too. Because I, I love Ricky Gervais. Um, ever since I've watched him in the Night of the Museum and The Office. And I figured this would be awesome to check out. And so I got the DVD. Uh, they do have this on Blu-ray too, but if I ever find the Blu-ray, um, I don't mind double dipping. I mean, it would be nice if they put this on 4K too. <laughs> yeah. And it does come with special features right here on the back. <laughs> As you can see. Yeah. <laughs> You can see Rick and Gervais, you know, just looking all, <laughs> all shocked and appalled. <laughs> I just love that. Um, yeah, it has uh, commentary by uh, co-writer and director David Cap, uh, as you may already know who he is, because you know he wrote Jurassic Park. I mean, he also did Carlito's Way. He did Premier Rush. Uh, Stir of Echoes, The Trigger Effect, you know, all these movies that he's done. Yeah, it's David Kapp. That's pronounced. <laughs> um, yeah, it also has a, another, also with Ricky Gervais to join in too, so. So if you listen to his commentary, you're going to be in for a laugh. Because he does throw in a lot of uh, humor, if you know him for, for sure. Yeah, in fact, all of his jokes are pretty much uh, politically incorrect, in a way. 
Yeah, like he kind of gets into all this other stuff too. That you know it's just, you're just going to be laughing your ass off. So there, there might be some offensive jokes in there as you can see, but hey, once you get to it, I think you'll know it. There's also a making of Ghost Town. Yeah, it's just a featurette, how they did the movie. Then they had uh, Some People Can't Do It, another featurette, and the ghostly effects. Yeah, you know, where they did use the special effects on on all the actors who portrayed them as ghosts and how they used those effects and how they you know how they appeared or reappeared and there's even some scenes too where you know, you actually go you just see right through them or they just they move around like whenever they almost got run over or so they just they go through their bodies, yeah, that sort of thing. Well, you know how, well, you know how the supernatural and paranormal um, of all the, the ghosts around, <laughs> so they, they can do anything. <laughs> so, of course, there have been a lot of um, ghost movies, and you know, like Ghostbusters and all that, and then so on. And then there's even movies uh, that are also dramas too. In a way. That's what they have in, in this uh, DVD set. It should also be on the Blu-ray as well. <laughs> and this is of course what the DVD looks like. <laughs> right here. Yeah, as usual, like all the Paramount titles. All great disc. And no artwork. So let's get right to it. It stars Ricky Gervais. Uh, Taya Leone, which you may know her from that short-lived TV show, uh, Flying Blind, that was on Fox back in the 90s. You may not remember that series now, but uh, but that was a show that she did before she became well-known as an actress. And I know she's been in a lot of stuff uh, over the years. Uh, she was in movies like um, Flirting with Disaster. Um, she was in The Family Man. Uh, she was in The Fun with Dick and Jane, the remake with uh, Jim Carrey. Um, she was even in the movie uh, Tower Heist with uh, Ben Stiller and Eddie Murphy, uh, along with uh, Matthew Broderick. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so she's also in the TV series Madam Security. So, yeah, that's her. Uh, Greg Kinnear. Well, I know he got his start from the the TV show that was on E Entertainment called Talk Soup, which would later be known as Soup uh, with Joe McHale, and uh, of course he would later be in the remake of Sabrina with uh, Harrison Ford and Julia Mon. Yeah, I love that one. Uh, Billy Campbell uh, from The Rocketeer. He was also in the movie Enough, and um, he was also in the, uh, the TV show uh, Dynasty, uh, the 4400, and once and again, and so on. <laughs> uh, Kristen Wiig from uh, Saturday Night Live. Yeah, she. Uh, yeah, she used to do a lot of comedies, and, and I know she was in Ghostbusters, the 2016 movie. Well, yeah, we all know that. Um, that was directed by Paul Feig, which I know she was in the movie Bridesmaids. Um, that was also directed by Paul Feig. And she was also in the movie Whippets, and uh, many other comedies that she's done. Dana Ivory from The Adders Family, yeah, The Adders Family movies, uh, yeah, the ones that came out in the 90s uh, with Raw Julia, Angelica Houston, Christina Ricci, Christopher Lloyd, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and she was also in the movie The Color Purple with um, Whoopi Goldberg, Danny Glover, and Ofa Rinfrey. Um, she was even in Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. <laughs> yeah, that's her. Asif uh, Mandave, 
I don't know if I pronounced his name right, but he, you know, he's a comedian. Uh, he was actually on The Daily Show, but he was also in the movie, um, which was also directed by David Cap, uh, Premier Rush. Uh, he also did um, he did other films too, like uh, like The Siege, Die Hard with the Vengeance, Random Parts, Spider-Man 2, Freedom Land, The Proposal. Yes. <laughs> then he was also Movie 43 and The Inner Ship. Yeah, which, those were garbage. But he was also in music and lyrics, which I also enjoy. Uh, well, you, you know, you, you've seen him a lot. Alan Ruck from uh, Fairly Spooler's Day Off and Speed. And he was also in the TV show Spin City uh, with um, Michael J. Fox. Yeah. Betty Gilpin, who later went on to do the TV series Glow. That's on Netflix. Which, of course, based on the 80s series that was very popular at the time of women's wrestling. <laughs> yeah, before Woman of Wrestling, known as WOW, which they brought it back, of course. Uh, she was also in the movie The Hunt. Yeah. Uh, Brian D. R. C. James, Brian Tarantina, Jeff Hiller. Michael Leon Woodley, Aaron Tave, Bridget Maloney, and Joseph Masserino. Yeah, it's written by David Cap along with John Camps, and it's also directed by David Cap. The movie begins in Manhattan, New York. We meet a man named Frank Harrelly, who's played by Greg Kinnear. While he was trying to buy an apartment for his mistress, some unknown woman to be exact. Yeah, he was on the phone along with his wife uh, Gwen, who's a professional Egyptologist, played by Te Leone. All of a sudden, he was accidentally killed by getting hit by a bus while avoiding narrowly from a fallen AC unit that just came on top of an apartment building from a black couple. So now he was simply a ghost, all alone. He was shocked and appalled about this happening. And it, it's crazy. A short time later, we meet a cranky, antisocial British dentist named Bertram Pincus DDS, played by Ricky Gervais, who just finished his dental work with a patient who's an annoying woman who just won't stop talking and yeah, she talks way too much um, he actually works with his colleague a uh, an indian dentist named dr prizar who's played by aza mandiv so he's about to head back to his apartment he's not much of a people person you know he acts like an asshole and a coward he's always criticizing them and avoiding them right away even makes fun of him too and he's also very rude too and self-centered especially when he didn't even let the the elevator open for for Gwen who's now a widower from a recently deceased husband Frank well even worse she didn't even let her in in the the taxi yeah you know, while it was raining outside well, therefore, um, he was all alone in the apartment. Uh, he took free bottles of milk and magnesia, all prescribed. Uh, he took a cup of the rotten one that sent him straight into the bathroom, taking a major dump. After that, he wants up in the hospital. He meets his self-involved surgeon with no name, but it is indeed a woman who's tan, played by Christian Wig. He was about to get a clonoscopy, but afterwards, Bertram can somehow see and communicate with the dead, which is all these ghosts around, 
including a World War One to a World War Two nurse played by Betty Gilpin, a ghost cop played by Brian Tarantino, a naked ghost with glasses, yeah, a nerd played by Jeff Hillard. Uh, <laughs> All these um, construction workers, a family man who's played by Alan Ruck, and an old lady named Marjorie Pickhall, played by Dana Ivory. So he went back straight to the hospital. He begins to explain his surgeon what's going on. And then they went straight to a private room, yes, and she keeps mocking him and all. She even brought in her uh, tall black um, doctor and guard to explain what's going on. And it turns out that Bertram was dead within seven minutes during a general anesthesia um, while having a colonoscopy. Yeah, crazy. So... Since then, all these ghosts started pestering him to help him with their unfinished personal business. So Frank, which finally spotted him, had promised to keep all the other ghosts away if Bertram can break up an engagement to Gwen's uh, uh, soon-to-be new husband, uh, Richard, who's played by Billy Campbell, a human rights lawyer, who thinks he's totally dishonest. So Bertram eventually agrees with Frank, and that's where it leads to a, a romantic scheme with Gwen from Richard, just using his past cold-hearted um, behavior behind him, which can be very difficult to, for him to, to do for Gwen. Because now he's going to start saying all these other crazy, politically incorrect uh, jokes here and there, which he did. And I know it, it could be really difficult for him to do so, because now Frank's going to try to help him out. But he's always keep making these damn mistakes. <laughs> How, however, he had, so yes, even during uh, the lecture that was going around, um, he then attracts her interest by analyzing the teeth of a mummified Egyptian pharaoh. Yeah, I mean, she does study a lot of these uh, corpses around. Since he is, she is an, an Egyptologist. <laughs> and she's been studying a lot here and there. So therefore, Bertram did have dinner at Gwen's apartment uh, with Richard. Just to explain all this stuff going around with their love life. And then... Next thing you know, um, yeah, they just had a drink and, and some some Italian food here and there. Uh, then she brought her dog around, just started staring, and and eventually they decided to take the dog for a walk, maybe to have a drink because of, fortunately the the place started smelling. Yeah, they put that uh, smell and all. So now, um, yeah, they went out for a drink, and then they had to explain about Frank. Turns out, because he was drinking uh, some martini and all that, and then trying to explain about his faults, and that's when Gwen found out about his mistress you know, before he died. And this, this is where it gets really complicated afterwards, because sooner or later... It's going to be the unbelievable truth, which that did happen. I hate that cliche, of course, but what can you do? Um, anyway, she. so all this time, she, he tries to to make things through. You know, just, he's been hanging around with her and, so, and even bought her a present. And that's when she found out what just happened and yeah you know, Frank had to and then Frank appeared of course and even though Bertram is you know going for a lot of problems 
still seeing all these ghosts around. They won't leave them alone. And here, here and there, and then... Yeah, I know, they just, they just won't stop appearing. Um, anyway. <laughs> she let, she then found out the truth about what's going on. Um, Bertram explained everything, and now he's all alone. Until he finally begins to solve his problems by actually, you know, talking to his, um, colleague, um, Dr. Pfizer about what's going on, you know, why is he always acting like this and everything. I mean, we also learned that he did have a wife, um, but it was dead. Uh, she was dead, of, of course, uh, when he was living in, in England. Yeah, he was living in London, too. So he came here because, well, apparently he wanted to become a dentist, you know, all alone and all. So now he tries to... Um, Set things right by beginning to to fix everything. He's now becoming a changed man. Uh, he he already solved all their problems, so now they they have their finished business for all the ghosts around. Now they finally went back to heaven here and there. So the only thing that's more difficult is having trying to um, to go back to Egypt to explain to to Gwen about you know Frank's problems and, and all which unfortunately he lied but then before this was gonna but then after that happened he too got run over by a bus yes and then at this rate uh, he, he soon became a ghost and now Frank eventually helps him out. So luckily, um, a Richard just came by, um, gave him CPR. So thank goodness he was alive. But he, he, he was rushed straight to the hospital. So now, you know, Frank helped him out. He's on his own. So now Frank is already straight to heaven. So after like, um, I guess a couple weeks, maybe even a month, um, he finally recovered from all the injuries that he had. Um, he did got a visit from his friends and all. Um, I mean, he did got a visit by a surgeon. So everything turned out quite fine, even better than ever. But Gwen, unfortunately, uh, couldn't visit him at the hospital because they couldn't allow her to, to be in. So now he's back um, at his uh, denti dentistry, you know, already uh, working with his patient and everything. And that's this is when Gwen finally came back, and and then then Bertram was about to explain to Gwen about what uh, what happened when Frank was just a young boy. That he actually had a, a nightmare. Like he was afraid that he was going to drown. Yeah, that's that's where he lied at first. But now it reveals the truth. So by the end of the movie, um, as a promise, um, he was going to be able to um, able to fix her teeth. So that way she'll be able to smile even better. And he said he'll take care of that. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, it's a very hilarious uh, romantic comedy and a fantasy, too. Uh, I, I just couldn't stop laughing every time I watched this movie. Uh, with a lot of memorable scenes here and there that you'll never forget. I mean, there's even scenes where every time someone sneezes, um, you probably know that the ghost actually appears here and there. <laughs> Even when he goes right through him, yeah, everyone just starts sneezing. Um, and all these other hilarious jokes that he can come up with, even though he's, he's having a difficult and complicated time while trying to get to know Gwen right away. <laughs> so.
So, oh, of course, it's always going to be that way, too. Um, but the cast was great. I mean, no doubt about it. This entire talented cast right here are just excellent. Ricky Gervais is just totally hilarious in this movie. And this was the perfect role for him to play. Because it really shows, I mean, it almost kind of takes away from his um, office persona that he did. <laughs> but he really knows what he's doing. Because even though this is indeed another uh, formula picture, where, of course, it, it's just like any other movie where they're going to have a leading man who's going who's gonna to fall in love with some beautiful woman who was once a widower or, or so. Well, and it has all these cliches here and there, and then next thing you know, there's always the unbelievable truth, and then next thing you know, he has to fix and solve all these problems. We get that. But still, it's it, it does feel like more like a 90s comedy in a way. I mean, it feels like one, too, even though it came out in the late 2000s. So it, but it works. And it is very sharp and witty. All the dialogue and all. Uh, Greg Kinnear is also um, terrific in the movie. As Frank, I mean, granted, I guess you could say he's sort of his sidekick in a way, considering he's had to help him out, try to talk him things through, and here and there. But of course, he's the only one. He's the only one he can see him, along with the rest of these ghosts. That's such a distraction. Um, Tay Leone is just beautiful, as usual, uh, very attractive, and all. I mean, you really care for her so much. I mean, even though, you know, Bertram has been been totally rude to her at times, but at least now we know that he really cares. I mean, he finally changes his ways, you know, from acting you know, so cynical and, and mean-spirited into a very joyful and happy man. As I, but he was also afraid because he didn't want to ruin Gwen's life at all, since he had to be with Richard. But even Frank uh, had did something stupid too, so we also learned about that. Um, but the rest of the cast uh, were great. I mean, even if they have their small roles here and there, I mean, it's, it's always nice that they pop in here and there while they were going out to several places here and, well, you know, Frank is trying to help Bertram out. <laughs> uh, the special effects that they use uh, for the ghosts are, are really well done. Um, they, they really uh, put a lot of great effort to it. Um, because they know exactly how ghosts can be, you know, they can see right through them, you know, they can move around, if they get run over or any other, you know, it, it'll go right straight into their bodies, yeah. <laughs> so it's it, it's so well done for 2008. Um, and it does have a soundtrack um, with a score done by Jeff uh, Sinelli. Yeah, you know, it's a very cheerful score, but it does have like other songs too, including uh, the Beatles, uh, I'm Looking Through You, yeah, which was sung by uh, Paul McCartney, and which he wrote the song with John Lennon. Uh, there's also the song, um, The Heart of Life, which is at the end credits, uh, that was written and performed by John Mayer. Yeah, and and there's also a song called Sideways by Citizen Cope. So yeah, you got some great songs here. But this was the perfect lead for, for Gervais, and it's great because after that he got to do the movie The Invention of Lying, yeah, another American comedy, and then he got to do other stuff too that follows. Um, even did a, a stand-up comedy on HBO. And I think he did a series, uh, an anime series on HBO too, as I recall, called the the Ricky Gervais Show, in there. Yeah. 
Uh, the film could have been a bigger hit, though. Uh, it it actually opened at number eight at the box office, making only over five thousand, over five million dollars. Uh, which at that rate would later go up to twenty-seven point one million out of its twenty million budget. So I mean, it it did try to to make more money as as much as it can, but still, I mean, if it had made more, if it had been at number two or maybe number one, yeah, it would have been a huge hit. This is why people need to start checking out movies like this more often. Yeah. There's also this utter funny scene in the movie where Bertram uh, had Richard as his uh, dentist patient where he begins to find out some secrets you know, behind him while well, he ends up giving him some nitrous uh, oxide which at this rate <laughs> it's the laughing gas so that way he'll begin to spread the secrets that will cause uh, Gwen to dump him which he did. He dumped him for <laughs> for Bertram. Interesting enough, uh, I, I'm glad it got positive reviews when it came out. I mean, got an 85% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, eventually, they gave it a Golden Tomato for Best Romance Film of night of 2008, and that's that's really clever and cool. But I never thought that would happen. <laughs> But I, I'm glad that it, that it got some praise and, and attention. Uh, because I think this is a pretty underrated movie. Right away. Yeah, so. That's what I love about it. So, anyway. That's Ghost Town. And I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, And I'll see you later. Bye.